Hello there, welcome to Showcase, the programme where we exhibit video work from people right across Hampshire. And a special one for you today, a final major project piece put together and directed by Robert White. And it features things from the other side, and it was made in June 2008. It's human nature to want to have some sort of resolution in tragedy. And contacting the spirit of a loved one who's passed recently quite often is a, a way to deal with bereavement for families and friends. People are desperate to believe. They are desperate to sort of hone into certain things and say, yes, that's me. I can identify with that. I think it's very dangerous. Uh, I think it's an incredibly clever industry. But I think at the end of the day, people are throwing their money away. And I, I think that the industry is very dangerous. It helps people find closure. Um, it's difficult because sometimes people want to come to you again and again and again and you have to try and almost stop that because they're almost using it as, a, as a, an emotional crutch. But it's usually when people do have a loss that they, um, they start looking into it and they start um, having their little experiences themselves. With the mediumship, you're actually linking with someone that's passed over, um, whether it's a mum, dad, whoever it might be, and you're getting evidence from that person. You're, you're, you're trying to see how they passed, when they passed, um, all different areas about their lives, their hobbies, just to show it's them, you know, little things that you couldn't possibly know. The history of spiritualism can basically be traced back to 1848 in the state of New York in America, and there was two sisters, the Fox sisters, and they claimed that they were able to communicate with a spirit, a man who had been murdered in their home through a series of rapping. And they claimed that they had developed a sort of Morse code with this spirit, communicating from the other side. At this point, um, the Katie and Margaret sister, Leah Fox, came onto the scene. She saw what the girls were doing and she decided to start a society and it was the Society of Spiritualists. They went public with their, with their ability to communicate, and it really took off. People were really interested in this phenomena. When we look at the time frame in, when, in which spiritualism arose, we can correlate it with some interesting advances that were going on in society. Darwin had subsequently, after the Fox sisters, published his Origin of Species. And this dealt a massive blow to religious traditions that believed that we were God's special creation, that we were put here for some reason. And with the theory of evolution, it no longer seemed to be so. So people were really interested in now looking at this from scientific point of view. Well, what can we actually know about the afterlife? Also, uh, during that time, there were organizations that were kind of forming certain spiritualist organizations that are still in force today, they kind of grouped themselves and they found that, you know, there is a need and we're going we're gonna to fill the niche, we're, we're there. And there was almost a dip. Uh, I think people found spiritualism quite strange, quite scary, kind of backed away from it. But then in 1999 in America, there was a series commissioned called Crossing Over with the medium John Edward. And that was hugely successful. And three years later, in 2002, Living TV commissioned the series Sixth Sense with Colin Fry, and then in the same year, Most Haunted. And these programs were hugely successful. People were tuning in, and there was suddenly a real renaissance as the medium as celebrity in the UK. And I think that there has been a huge boom since then. People are very interested. People want to believe and there is a huge need to believe and to tune in to such programs. Well it's important first to start with a differentiation between psychics who genuinely believe that they have some sort of psychic ability. These people could be your neighbor, it could be a friend, even a family member, maybe even you. And then we have the person who is actually a con artist. They know they don't have any sort of psychic powers but they are out there for some reason usually to turn a profit. Cold reading is a technique that mediums use to pick up on subtle clues that their subject is giving them. Something like body language, so a person's clothing would give a lot of clues about them. Um, words that they use if they, if they start to describe what they do for a career, it can say a lot about people. And in fact, most people are 
rather intuitively good at cold reading. This is how we interact as social beings. We pick up on subtle clues about someone. Okay, sir, thank you. Well, can we get a connection, please, to someone who understands that their dad, who's passed the spirit, was a shop steward? Arthur Walker. Arthur Walter. I've got to be able to get this connection to someone who was connected to or involved in a union. Your dad was in the post office union. Was it? Yeah. Alright. So you'd understand it as Arthur Walter, not Arthur Walker. Uh, Walter. Walter. Right, okay. Name. I had actually quite an interesting uh, meeting with a spiritualist when I was quite young. I've just passed my GCSEs. And I had, for some reason, for some strange reason, I had this sort of business suit on. And the medium said to me, oh, um, I can see you, you, you're going to do fantastically in finance. I can see you um, in London in a, a tall glass building. I can see you um, as an accountant. You're going to be really successful as an accountant. And I'm sitting there thinking, I've just failed my GCSE maths. What are you talking about? And then I looked and I thought, right, OK, she's cold reading me on the basis of what I'm wearing. The other aspect of making reading sound extremely specific and very believable is, in fact, a psychological phenomena of the participants where they, they confirm what the medium is telling them and they selectively remember what the medium has told them. So they come away thinking that they've just been given this absolutely phenomenal reading of insight into their life and how could this person know such specific details about them. But in fact, in control studies where, where we set up a reading between a medium and a subject, we find afterwards that there is a large gap between what the subject remembers and what actually happened when we go back and play back the tape. In terms of coping with the loss of a loved one, studies have shown that people who see a medium after and feel that they've had a positive interaction with their loved one who's passed over into the other world that they obviously believe in, fare a little bit better. This closure that this person now feels that they have is very strong, is a very strong psychological defense mechanism. It's difficult because sometimes people want to come to you again and again and again and you have to try and almost stop that because they're almost using it as, a, as a, an emotional crutch. Um, then, then they're not kind of moving on. So uh, it is good when someone comes to you and you can give them that closure if they didn't get a chance to say goodbye, if, if someone went with, sort of suddenly. I, I've never, I mean, I've lost people myself, you know, and I'd never ever take a, advantage. And I, don't, I don't think mediums would as a whole. You're going to get one or two in any anything that are going to take advantage. Of course you are. Obviously you are, but all the ones I've met, and I've met hundreds of mediums and psychics, um, I would say 99% of them are genuine, and they're just doing their best to help people. He's pulling me over to you, and he's just um, asking me to um, say to you, he would like to thank you for um, saving him of embarrassment. Um, like, um, there were things that you did for him that he wouldn't have liked the ladies to have done and um, he's like very grateful to you. <laughs> well, some interesting points raised there but uh, sadly that's all we've got time for on this edition of Showcase and indeed this series but fear not we'll be back later in the year and who knows it might well be your video that's appearing on the showcase. As ever, email us charisma.productions at yahoo.co.uk if you've got something to submit. Maybe you just want to comment about the things you've seen here. Let us know. We rely on your feedback. From me and the team, thanks for watching. Goodbye.